How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repair and here is my main electrical panel with the cover off. It is a Square D QO 200 amp panel with 40 spaces that are completely maxed out. Now in this year I have some additional projects coming up. I'm thinking about swapping out my gas furnace for an electric heat pump. I have some car charging needs coming online and both a DIY install solar project and a professional install solar project. So I need more capacity in my main panel. The question is how am I going to approach this? So my approach is I'm going to install right next to this guy a Square D QO so I match up my breakers 125 amp 24 space sub panel. Now this might not be a project you're willing to take on, but whether you're doing a DIY safely and to code, or you're gonna get a professional install, at least in this video, you're gonna get a much better idea of the options that you have available if you have a similar issue where your panel is completely full and you have additional needs coming up now or in the near future. And a common question I get is how much does this cost if you're gonna professionally install? So I'll answer that question a little bit later on as I'm putting together a page over at everydayhomerepairs.com that you can reference and see the material and labor costs associated to where you live. Now kicking off the sub panel install, we wanna know where are we gonna be installing this. Specifically for this video, we are gonna be installing right next to the main panel. Now, if you're wanting to install a sub panel, let's say in a detached garage, you're trenching that in, that's a whole different video. And we actually have that video on our channel and I'll put a link in the description for you guys to reference, just in case that sub panel installs a little closer to your needs. Here, I just need more capacity. I want it as close as possible to my main panel. I have the 30 inch clearance side to side, 36 inch clearance front to back, and then top to bottom, at least the 78 inches that's called out in code. So this is a good space for me to put my sub panel as well. Now, since I'm gonna go in this wall cavity right next to it, I would wanna cross-reference that I don't have any wires, any Romex coming through clamps and the knockouts on this side of the sub panel. Checking that, I do not, so I should be clear. I'm gonna have most likely some insulation in this wall, but hopefully we're not contending with anything else that's gonna make our install a little more complex. So I just kick off by simply using my four foot level, going to the top of that main sub panel, and then just making a reference line here, which would be my cut line as I cut out this drywall, that's the level I wanna cut out for the service panel to at least line up my top. The bottoms are gonna be a little different because remember I have only 24 spaces on the sub panel. And then I know the box is gonna be 21 inches in overall length here. So I just reference that top line, mark off 21 inches, giving just a little bit more Then again, bringing out my four foot level, referencing that 21 inch line, making sure my bubble is level. So now just referencing the top and bottom lines, I'll also be able to follow the studs down with my jab saw. That should open up the space and hopefully we're all clear to do a dry fit of our sub panel. Now you could use your oscillating tool, but with a jab saw, I like to take my time, not get in a rush, and then I could feel anything. If there was something back there in the wall cavity, I could easily feel it and not damage anything. So we'll do the bottom, then top, and run the left-hand side. And then before I do the right-hand side, I'm gonna secure two screws to make sure that piece doesn't break off before finishing my cut. Now it's not always as smooth, but I have a wide open wall cavity here. It's actually double wall thickness thick, so we have plenty of room to set that sub panel in. Next up, I wanna show you how to get the THHN wire to the main panel. And also, don't forget, we got a full panel here. I need to get a 100 amp two pole breaker in our main panel, which is gonna be feeding our sub panel. So that means we're gonna to have to move around a few circuits, which will come in handy for your project as well. Now hit my main disconnect. It's always best to run with as little of your panel energized, but remember, even when you hit the main disconnect, those lugs from the main connectors coming from your meter base are still live. Taking a two and a quarter inch hole saw on the back side, I'm lining that up and you'll see the drill bit poke through there. And now we'll focus in and I'll complete the cut, pulling out that wood piece from the stud. Then from the back side, I can take my flathead screwdriver and knock out that blank remove it with my Knipex, and then from the front side, I'm going to knock out the next ring so I can fit my inch and a half PVC conduit. 
Now I will do a dry fit just to make sure everything lines up here by putting my fitting in from the back side, confirming that we're good to go. Now is this exact path and plan of attack gonna work out for you? Not necessarily. Now remember, I'm using a 100 amp to feed from my main panel to my sub panel. So because I'm using a 100 amp breaker, that means I need two gauge conductors. So I'm gonna have two two gauge conductors for my hots, one two gauge conductor for my neutral, and then a six gauge for the bare ground. Those are gonna be running through my schedule 40 PVC from the side of my main panel. And then that's gonna be up through the bottom, same knockout in the bottom of the sub panel here. So that's gonna have a nice elbow running, giving me a path for those wires. Now, alternatively, if you were just using a 60 amp breaker, you might be able to go with a six gauge Romex getting clamps exiting your main panel, clamp entering your sub panel, and then that might get you the wire you need to now feed your sub panel from your main panel. And that can give you some additional flexibility opposed to using like a conduit, which is gonna be a little bit more rigid and restricted. For me, I went with Schedule 40 PVC conduit, which is gonna give me a nice, protected path from my main panel to my sub panel, and then it also gives me the capacity I needed. Now I needed to do a little bit of modifications. I was able to take just a standard 90 degree and modify that, just cutting it slightly shorter to make sure that it lined up coming out of the side of that main panel to the bottom of my sub panel, and then just gluing on the two fittings so I'll be able to thread those in and secure them to each of the panels. Now I went with inch and a half because inch and a half schedule 40 PVC is gonna have capacity for six two gauge conductors. Now remember I have three two gauge conductors, then I have a six gauge bare copper, and then that gives me a little bit more capacity to run some 12 gauge because I need to move two circuits from main panel over to sub panel, and then that's gonna give me my opening for my 100 amp breaker that's gonna be the main feeder breaker for the sub panel. All right, so now I'm gonna secure all this up so we can get that sub panel set and start running some wires. So I'll place this elbow first into the main panel, just threading that through and starting to thread the nut on. I will not tighten it yet because I want a little bit of play while we set this sub panel. Setting a sub panel in place. Now I'll go ahead and secure that with four screws. Now I'm only using inch and a half screws because I do not want to penetrate through further than the stud, especially with the main panel on the right hand side. And then it'll be slightly offset in from the drywall about a quarter of an inch. Once that's secure, then we'll place the nuts on both ends, tap those to tighten them up, finishing off with the plastic bushings to protect the wire. Here's what the finished product looks like. And now we have a nice inch and a half piece of conduit between the two panels. Now, since this is a sub panel, we do not want to bring our grounds and neutrals together on the same bar. So this is going to be your neutral bar. We're going to bring our two gauge neutral conductor right into this lug. And then we want to actually install a separate grounding bar, which is easy enough. And there's actually small nubs or holes. So if you set this on two nubs, you actually only need one mounting screw to get that securely attached to your sub panel. And then as mentioned at the start, one of the primary purposes of installing the sub panel is to start generating my own power at home by installing solar panels, both as a DIY kit that will be on a pergola over my patio, and then also a professional install. Now, if that type of project is in your future, independent on whether you're taking on DIY or professional install, you need to educate yourself. One of the best places to start, you see a link in the description. You can jump over to solarviews.com, provide a little information on your home and some contact information, and you'll be able to size your system. So starting off, I was looking at 33 panels in a little over 11 kilowatt system. Now I need a little bit more capacity than that to plan on electric car charging and swapping out my gas furnace for electric heat pump. 
So I make those adjustments and get my cost estimation. And then if I want to start getting quotes so I can plan this out, you can let SolarViews know, connect me with one, two, three, or however many installers you want and start to get that information coming in so you can make the smart decisions for your home. But right now, I'm gonna start moving some circuit breakers around, getting capacity for that 100 amp in my main panel, and then also running those wires through our conduit. Now remember, take caution when working in the panel. Even with the main disconnect on, those lugs are hot underneath the main disconnect. First up, I remove that mounting bracket, which is my generator inlet breaker. So I'll remove that, remove the two hots, from the two different circuit breakers on the right so I can then land my 100 amp two pull breaker. Then I can put back that retaining bracket and my main panel breakers are now in place. Then I'll go ahead and get the hot neutral and ground for each of the two circuits I need to relocate to the sub panel. Then I'll use WAGO 221-2401 inline splices. These are relatively new wire connectors in the United States and they work absolutely great for this type of application. You just clip them on those wires and then get your extension 12 gauge wires, loop those back and then feed them through the inch and a half PVC conduit. Then kind of get your final place for your wires following the edge of the overall box and then start to land your wires starting off with the ground. Remember we'll connect those to the separate ground bar because that does not combine in the sub panel to the neutrals. Then we'll land our neutral, tighten that up, and then finish off with the hot for the first of the two circuit breakers that we're relocating to this panel. And then we'll go through and we'll do the exact same thing using the WAGOs to extend out this second and last circuit that we need to relocate, putting our new 12 gauge wire, feeding that through, and then go ahead and land that on your ground bar and then feeding to the other side of the neutral bar. And then the last wire we'll land is our hot going into that breaker. Now pause right here, and if you guys are like, this is way more than I should be taking on, good. Do not take on these projects unless you feel completely safe and you know what you're doing. And I'm trying to get better at that where you just wanna know how these projects come together so you can be a more educated consumer and hire that out. So again, in the description below the video, I'll have a link to a webpage over at everydayhomerepairs.com. That webpage breaks down what you can expect for cost. It'll break down material cost, and then it'll also look at different categories of an older home, kind of mid-age home and newer home, and then your markets. Are you in a smaller, mid-size, or larger market, which can adjust your labor rates? So that website is meant to give you an idea of what this exact project will cost. And I'm hoping to do that for more projects in the future. So one, we can help DIYers, but also help those that need a professional install. So let's jump back into it. Then we're gonna take the much larger two gauge co conductors. I'm gonna land my first two conductors. Those are gonna be the phase A and B going to that 100 amp two pole breaker. So we'll get those in place, making sure they're seated, and then we'll torque those down on the 100 amp breaker, routing those along the outside of the main panel. Once those are where we want them, then we'll size up the wires, strip those off, and then land those on the two lugs here on our sub panel. Now, once we have our hots in place, then we're gonna go ahead and bring over an additional two gauge. Now, this one is gonna be our neutral. Now, this can be a little bit hard finding a spot on your neutral ground bars here on the main panel, but there should be some larger diameter holes that could accommodate something like a two gauge wire. Once you have that, we'll connect it up to the lug on the sub panel. And then we're gonna finish off and this is just a six gauge. All I need is a six gauge bare ground for that ground going from the main panel over to the sub panel. Finish those up, taking your time, and then don't forget, check over your work. Just trace everything down, make sure it's landing where you want it before turning back on your main disconnect at the main panel. 
So now all the connections are made. We have our main disconnect on the on position. We have our 100 amp circuit breaker in the on position. Now that's feeding into our sub panel. Have a multimeter set to AC. I wanna check across the two different phases, expecting to get close to 240. We're saying 236. I wanna go from ground to the first phase here, 118, and then we'll go ground to the first phase here, 118, and then we'll go ground to neutral, not expecting anything. So we are looking good, and now we've validated that everything is wired correctly, and we're ready to put the covers back on. So that's it, hopefully that helps you guys out. Now, if you have a sub panel you need to install in a detached garage, a shed, a barn, we have a video just like that as well where we ran 75 feet of trench going from a home to a detached garage. So if that's more to what your project is, check out this video right here. And we got our buddy Joel Walsman from Jefferson Electric and Electric Pro Academy YouTube channel running us through the complete step-by-step -step on that project, which does have a few more things that you need to take into account. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.